Welcome to the TNT EdTech Podcast. We know tech. We are your hosts. I'm Scott, the teacher. And I'm Matthew, the tech coach. Welcome, everyone, to the TNT EdTech Podcast. I'm Scott Noons, your host, with Matthew Ketchum. And today, we are talking about madness what, what kind, kind of madness, madness? no no madness? i'm asking you i i i'm mad for school i'm <laughs> mad for flipgrid flipgrid madness yeah some march madness in the ed tech world there's a lot of good stuff right now and what i like best about it is it, it's not like another zoom call right another meeting another pd at the end of the day it's something fun and whether you are a content creator or a consumer, there's something for you. And what I love about these items are there are things you can use today or tomorrow. You could take a look tonight at these tools, at these items, these little twists with familiar ed tech tools uh, that we have in store for you tonight. And you can use them tomorrow. You can use them next week. And you can even put your own twist. Uh, in fact, uh, that's your mission. <laughs> Leave with your own twist and then let us know on social media what you decide to do with these tools. So I'm going to share my screen here. Yeah, uh, within what, Scott? Like a minute or two, you learn a new tip? With the yeah. Other? Yeah. 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 We're just going to jam through. So not a super long episode tonight. We're just going to get right into it and share these out. So I'm going to make this uh, full screen here. And right here up on Twitter, we have Kyle Nemus, friend of the podcast, co-creator and founder of the tool Classroom Q, which I used a lot last year when I was in the classroom. I love it. I think it has lots of potential. Catlin Tucker agrees. So does Jennifer Gonzalez. So, hey, if those two queens of ed tech agree with me, I feel like that's a great tool. And Kyle has like floored me with the response he's gotten on these tools. So in traditional March Madness fashion, which focuses on um, about 64 college teams uh, coming down to like just one, right? And uh, it, it's super engaging. I don't even really care for college basketball. Uh, please, please don't hurt me over that. <laughs> All of our listeners, but uh, I do get into March Madness, uh, and so I'm so happy that there are some cool EdTech March Madness things uh, going on, and Kyle Nemus, you know, is a great place to start. He's put forward all these apps. Um, which ones are your favorite, Matthew? Let, let's talk about the beginning. What What did you pick, and what do you think is going to make it to the finals here? You're you're muted, FYI. Heads up. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. There we go. Is are we talking about the bracket of Flipgrid and what was it? Quizzes? The, those yeah. Quizzes? No, no. Um do I, here, I'll share it on the screen okay. again. Let's see if it'll show you. There we go. So any of them on the left or any of them on the right? Yeah, yeah. Like what would you pick for each one? Like what did you want between Ed Puzzle and Insert Learning? Let's start there on the the right side. Which would you have picked? Ed Puzzle. Yeah, and then yeah, that was mine too. I'd say. And okay. what about for the next one, Formative and Moat? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I really like the audio feedback idea. I think I'm going with Moat. Okay. Okay. And then what about Screencastify and we Video? I think a lot of people, I mean, it didn't end up winning, but um, I know a lot of people were jumping in the comments saying Moat should have won. What about oh, we, uh, we Video Screencastify? Well, this is interesting. We Video just came out with a Chrome extension that does screencasting now. So oh, that's pretty cool. I don't know if they were knew that or when they were comparing. I, I would go with we video just because you can do even more edits than you can in Screencastify. Yeah, I would say, you know, one of my top three F words comes into play here, and that's free. 
right? Okay. Screencastify, there are some paid features, if I'm not mistaken, but uh, for the free option, you get a lot. So I, I think instinctually, the first thing educators gravitate towards is something free or something that's paid for by the district. So if they don't have a license for Wii Video, in my opinion, the free version is still kind of weak. You're really limited. Um, so I, uh, I, I personally would have done Screencastify versus Loom. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely want to come back to that one. I did okay. pick Wii Video for this, though. Oh, you did? Um, it, as well, yeah, that was my pick. And then I think you know <laughs> we, what I would have picked between Nearpod and Pear Deck. Yeah, Both yeah, great did, tools. We did a battle earlier on this. And when, a couple yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, I will have to say Nearpod has these uh additional bundles for like digital citizenship and sel that are incredible yeah um what would you say with these final four that are left so we got flipgrid yeah. and quizzes what would you pick there oh my god i would go flipgrid just because content creation with it student creation communication there's so many 21st century skills so many isti standards there with that one yeah yeah i agree and then what about Edpuzzle and Nearpod? Uh, Nearpod has a video editing kind of feature like Edpuzzle does, plus more. So I guess I'd go with Nearpod. Flipgrid versus Nearpod, I think I would have. Yeah, yeah, that would be my pick. And overall, which one would you say and why? I would say Flipgrid, just the student engagement of them creating. Uh, Nearpod, they can be... I guess a consumer of it and engage with it, but Flipgrid's they can actually create them and they're it's of their own voice. I would do I would pick Flipgrid. Yeah, the thing I like about Flipgrid is that it's so easy to use. Like I, I yeah really like Nearpod and that's one of my go tos. It's one of my all in ones. I would say it's probably in my top three tools that I use all the time and pretty much every day i would say i use powerpoint or kind of like the microsoft creative suite i've kind of gone over to that side especially with being in mie i just keep learning about all these new features and mike Tholfson is great with his little quick tips and showing these quick gifts of how to do new things like uh, i just learned like this new zoom in mode and i'm always advocating for the ai feature in PowerPoint. I think it's so much better than the one embedded in Google. Google's got to step it up there. Uh, that's one of the key reasons why I switched is because, hey, I don't have to really um, ideate so much on the graphics and get hung up. I can generate solid graphics uh, with the AI and it does a really good job from a design perspective and it helps me kind of ideate too when i'm feeling a little stuck i would like some ideas like that uh, as a future tool for when i write like here are some suggestions and you kind of choose you know maybe there are 10 20 options and you can scroll for more and the ai kind of helps you ideate when you have some writer's block i think that would be a cool thing uh, but free again just all the way flipgrid is 100 percent free yeah, and I think that's great. And you can go through your PowerPoint or your Google slide in a Flipgrid video. And what I really like about it, too, is it forces you to be concise. There's that time limit of 10 minutes. I, I know you may want to do a little bit more, but then there's other tools for that, right? Going back to PowerPoint, I like that you can screen record in PowerPoint for an elongated time. I don't know what the max is. I think my max with screen recording is about 45 minutes um, and PowerPoint held up. Wow. That's yeah. incredible. And, and the other thing, like you were saying, that we've noticed you know, even our own students using it is that uh, they'll, they'll practice because they have a chance not to submit it yet. They can rewatch it. But they're they're becoming masters of even the content they're sharing out because they're they're redoing it to create a really good presentation because they know their peers will see it. Mm -hmm. No, this is great. So so Scott, are I like this idea 
is this something that we can do with TNT and our audience? Yeah, yeah. So definitely shout out again to Kyle Nemus. But one of the things that we talked a lot about last week when we introduced the start of this EdTech Madness of 2021 was, hey, there were some some apps like Loom that were left off. And where's GimKit? We need GimKit in the Hello. mix, right? Hello. So two two of our favorite apps that we also use a lot, I would say, you know, going out to a top five, I would throw Loom in there. I use that daily when I'm making videos and tutorials for teachers and students. And then GimKit, if I want to gamify the classroom, make things fun, if I want to do edu protocols like Fast and Curious, I'm going to be using that tool. And I just love to support a former student, you know, a, a former high school student. So I guess there's part of that too, that whole uh, like young entrepreneurial support. Um, yeah. And quick shout out to the EdTech rabbi, uh, Michael Cohen, because he's doing that with his initiative. Uh, let's, uh, let's double up. And I think that's really cool. And it's double spelled D-U-B-B-L-E. So uh, definitely check that out. Um, yeah. So let us know in the comments which apps you would like to see in our own 2021 March Madness for EdTech. Scott. You know, we're, yeah. They, they're missing Adobe Spark. That too in Canva. Yes. We yeah, got so we, please help us. Please help us with your ideas. Yeah. So we we have some ready to go, but let us know if you have other ones. Is there an app you did not see on here uh that you want to see featured and to kind of battle it out? Uh, or is there one on this list that you just want to see gone? It it doesn't belong and we got to ditch it uh, from the next go round. And then uh, just going into the next item, I'm going to back up here. Um, I'm trying to get to, and of course I can't find it now. Maybe, maybe Joe. Oh, here it is. There you go. Here it is. So um, the next piece we wanted to talk about here, how about you lead this one, Matthew? Yeah, so speaking of uh, Flipgrid and March Madness style, there is a Flipgrid Madness, uh, and it's down to, I think, eight right now, and voting's going on until March 15th, and then you can um, vote for the top four, but you can find this at flipgrid.com forward slash Flipgrid Madness. And you can see the Flipgrid videos that we're going to show here in a moment. And you can vote there as well. Again, they're 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 at the engaging eight right now. And you get to vote for the top four that will battle it out. And these are like within a minute or two, you're learning some really great tips about Flipgrid. Uh, and Scott, I'll have you share. I think you're going to share Randall and Joe and a couple others from the grid. Yeah, so shout out to uh, Dr. Randall Sampson. Uh, essentially, uh, these educators are paired up against each other. So we have Joe versus Randall with their ideas. And then uh, let's see, our friend Priscilla Heredia and our friend Stacy Roshan are battling it out. So you'll have to check that out. What was... Um, I'm trying to think. You told me what it was. Here it is. Nope. It's flipgrid.com backslash flipgrid madness uh, is the direct link. And that's exactly where you are right now. That's what that, that's where I am. That's what I was looking for. The item that I lost, and I'll throw it on the screen here. And voting's on that site too. The the link right before that is that actual online form to vote again you have till march 15th to to vote and then you get to see the final four yeah and i'm gonna pull up that form here's what it looks like so when i was talking about teachers battling it out we have uh katrina and maria battling it out both foreign language teachers and then priscilla and stacy battling it out 
it, it's hard uh, when there's friends battling it out. So I can't share who I'm going to vote for. Uh, it's a tough one. I'm still not sure on that one. And then uh, we have Milan and Jim and then our buddies, Randall and Joe. You'll have to check those out. They have some really cool ideas. Uh, I'll show Joe's real quick. Okay. Oh, the audio isn't playing now. Um, I'll just share what he's talking about. He is talking about grid masks. So you'll have to share that out. And then Dr. Randall Sampson is talking about how to use Bitmojis in Flipgrid and also talking about using AR codes in there. So pretty cool stuff. Uh, definitely check those out. And then Flipgrid just keeps bringing it. And they also have the Flipgrid App Smash Madness 2020 uh, from last year. I recommend you, you check that out. Still really cool. Have some great videos from Amy Store, Jake Miller. We got the Merrills over here. Here's Stacy Rashawn again. Uh, there's Dr. Randall Sampson, D. Lanier, our buddy Alfonso Mendoza, uh, Sean Ford, Priscilla Heredia again, Andy Knieven, and more. So definitely check that out for ideas. And if you're finding that your students are getting kind of tired of the same thing, I recommend this grid because there are a lot of still fresh ideas and little twists uh, that you can do. Um, you want to do video podcasts? This is a great one. Or student podcasting, that's something that just keeps growing and growing. And so I would definitely check that out. And then anything else as we kind of close out, Matthew? Uh, I saw um, another Frip Grid Madness. This isn't like the the uh, ranking tiers, but what they did is there was a tool that you were showing me. Um, what is it? It's genuinely. Is that how you say? Genially. Genially, and uh, it's like G E N I A L dot L Y. But someone made a Flipgrid Madness uh, calendar. It's it, can I? I know who that was. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, our friend. Okay. From Sailing the Seven Seas, Kathy Kersnowski. No way. She made Yeah. That. Yeah, she made that. What? I'm pretty sure she made that. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. And quick shout out while you're trying to share your screen. Here, I probably have to stop sharing. There we go. Shout out to Tyler Keith. I agree. How can we pick between Randall and Joe? You can. You, yeah, <laughs> we, we really can't. It, it's tough. I actually Scott. really like both of those. Scott, we yeah, we have smash joe and randall together and they're one power <laughs> combine them yeah like captain them. planet when their yes. powers combine <laughs> i am captain planet <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> uh, so oh. talk about this one i'm just yeah. like in awe what yeah, does she have really, going on here this is a really neat idea i really like this even for like you know any teacher pd so the squares are laid out as the March calendar. So these are the different days of uh, March. And you get some choice here because you can click on a day that you're interested in. But when you click on the plus signs, it's taking you to a resource to learn more about that, that tip for that day, which I think is a really great way. You have some choice. You have like learning one thing at a time, step by step. This is something as a resource you could always go back to. So I was really impressed with this layout. And I really like the uh, gentle nudge to click on the plus signs with the little pulsing action. <laughs> uh, no, that's, that's really cool. And it does yeah. look like I'm right. When you clicked on that flip hunt, it yeah. took us to Kathy Kersnowski's uh, website, kersey.com. So okay, uh, if you want to follow her, uh, there's her website. And uh, her social media, I believe, is just Kersey as well so k-e-r-s-z-i if you want to follow her on twitter or social media and there she is she's great and i can't remember the official title but back in 2019 you may remember when we were there at flipgrid live she won like the flipgrid teacher of the year award that's which right really cool that's yeah true. i remember being super impressed she had like a 
super techie shirt that lit up. Do you remember that? That was pretty sweet. Yeah, I do. That was yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. So, um, another shout out to Kathy Kurznowski, and don't forget to check out her book, Sailing with the Seven Seas. So, it talks a lot about student engagement, and it goes beyond the four C's and it has a focus primarily on uh, Microsoft products, but a lot about Flipgrid. So let's say you're, you're devoted to Google, right? And you're not going over to the dark side. Like I did. I'm not going Uh, over Scott. You're not going over, right? It's like Apple versus Android kind of thing here. Um, Well, guess what? You still got to use Flipgrid. Google doesn't have anything (laughs) close. So still check out the book. There's lots of good things. And I love how they brought in educators from all over the world. So not just here in the U.S. And they're on opposite sides of the U.S. So we got Becky Keene over up in Seattle, Washington, and then Kathy Kurznowski, I believe, in the New Jersey area. So they're in different uh, book is sailing the seven seas coast to coast that's it awesome. fits, right yes, and exactly. then you're you're global so yeah. uh being portuguese and and sailing and all that like learning my my ancestral history uh you know with like henry the navigator uh sailing you know the seas not not the seven seas though um you know has a, a deeper meaning to me it's very cool culturally as well for myself so uh check it out and let us know what you think. And uh, if there's a topic you want us to cover on the podcast, let us know that as well. Follow us on social media together at tntedtech.com. And where can they follow you on social media, Matthew? At Matt EdTech Coach. And you can follow me right here, Mr. Noons Teach, on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and uh, you can follow me on LinkedIn, but I'm not there at Mr. Noons Teach. Just Scott <laughs> Noons on LinkedIn. And I've been doing more on LinkedIn. I, I really like it. I think Twitter is probably my favorite. And okay. then probably LinkedIn or Voxer, right? Uh, right. I, I haven't gone over to the dark side and picked up an Apple device to join <laughs> in on Clubhouse. Although, like... I'm this close. I actually went down to Costco a couple weeks ago to go buy an iPad. And then I was reminded why I don't have one. They cost so much. Oh, goodness. uh, Wait till around Easter time. There's usually some good deals or incentives or certificates, like a gift card to the store. Yes, yes. And definitely let us know on social media um, what you want to hear for our next episode we have some ideas but we want to hear from you our listeners and i keep pushing matthew to do an internet of things episode so laying it on thick matthew and uh let us know if that's something you want to hear more about if you're not sure what the internet of things is uh what's a quick little tidbit about it matthew what is it essentially they're connected devices to the internet in your home that can assist you with normal living in a home situation, such as lights and doors or asking questions. That's pretty sweet. So quick question on that. Yeah. If I set up an opto print and it connects to Wi-Fi and I could view it on my cell phone or wherever I go, like with my 3D printer, right? Is that part of the internet of things? Or is that something different? No. So I would say Internet of Things is also something in your home that you could control that's connected to the web and you could control with an app when you're not at home. So I would consider Internet of Things. Okay. Hey, that is cool. So let us know. Matthew is like the hidden expert on (laughs) that, like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. You don't want to see his kung fu moves. (laughs) Uh, quick shout out to Matthew. Like people drive hours to our local uh, community college, our local community college. I kid you not to attend his course. Uh, and Sylvia Lua, shout out um, to my former coworker. Uh, she said, it sounds interesting. Smart bulbs are kind of not so smart. Oh, <laughs> we, we, we can talk about how, 
how sometimes they can outsmart us, but we can outsmart them too. Oh, there you go. There you go. So it's not you, Sylvia. Uh, it's it's the device, and we're going to help you figure that out. So Definitely. sounds good. Don't forget to listen to the, the TNT Ad Tech podcast on the podcast player of your choice. So uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Overcast. Uh, there's so many of them. We're on all of them. And if you don't see it, please let us know right away so we can fix that. Maybe there's a drop link or something. And, and Scott, yeah. I just need to share also uh, our show notes are the text part of any podcast player when you look at an episode. So if you're curious about a link or something that we talked about, we have those in our show notes. Yeah, great reminder. And if you like the podcast, head on over to Apple Podcasts. Give us a shout out. Let us know what you think about the podcast. Uh, give us, uh, you know, an objective review, right? Uh, we definitely want to know. We're definitely open to constructive criticism as well. That's a okay by us. But we would love to hear from you, uh, you know, because that helps us get better and helps us provide uh, content that you like and enjoy. And thanks so much for listening. And you can also check us out at www.tntedtech.com. Thank you for listening to the TNT EdTech Podcast. You can follow us on any podcast player of your choice. Also on Twitter at TNT EdTech. Follow us on the web at www.tntedtech.com.